So before I start today's video, I wanted to share something with you that I find pretty cool. A friend of mine is a teacher at Araby Elementary, and she shared my Ruby Bridges video with her class yesterday, and her class sent me a little thank you message, and uh, I wanted to share that with you and show it to you. So uh, hey kids, if you're watching, thanks for watching. I'm glad you enjoyed the videos. Uh, I'll be making more similar to that one uh, and hopefully you'll like those as well uh, but check this video out this is cool So I am uptown New Orleans and standing on the corner of Washington Avenue and Coliseum Street. Uh, and here is the infamous Commander's Palace restaurant. Been here since 1890 or 1880, depending on who you ask. But uh, there it is, fully restored after Hurricane Katrina damaged it back in 2005. Looks as beautiful as ever. I hear the food's good. Lafayette Cemetery number one, located in the Garden District of New Orleans. It's been here since 1833. There are still burials that take place in this cemetery. There are about a thousand tombs and about 7,000 people buried here. It is the size of a city block. It is also not racially or religiously segregated and contains over 26 nationalities. It is also the most filmed cemetery in New Orleans. It was used in the movie Double Jeopardy. It was used in the TV show NCIS New Orleans the originals on the CW network. It's also been used in the New Kids on the Block video, You Got It, The Right Stuff. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. Back out front of the cemetery are two live oak trees. This one here was planted in the 1850s. There's one on the other side of the entrance that was also planted at the same time, but in 2005, Hurricane Katrina destroyed it. When you walk in the cemetery, immediately to your right and to your left are what's called internment chambers. These are the uh, less expensive option of being buried in the cemetery without having to spend a lot of money on a big family tomb. This tomb here has the imagery of a broken flower engraved on it. The broken flower is to represent the end of life. This family, the Cersei family, lost three of their children in two days to yellow fever back in 1878. This is what's called a society tomb. This particular one belongs to the Independent Order of Oddfellows, which is an organization that is still active today. This tomb was built by the man buried on the left, James Hagen who built it in 1870. He was a tomb builder and he built his own tomb. There are three volunteer fire company tombs in the cemetery. This one, the Jefferson Fire Company number 22, is the largest. There is a carved fire engine on the front. 
if you wanted to be buried in the dirt as opposed to in a tomb in New Orleans, you would be buried in what's called coping tombs. A coping wall is built going about three feet underground. The unembalmed bodies are placed in unfinished pine boxes and then placed inside and then dirt brought from outside the cemetery is used to cover the casket. This tomb belongs to Jacob Payne, whose house Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy, died in. There are no records for anybody being buried in the Koenig tomb. Apparently, the family moved away before ever using the tomb, but they left it open and it allows us to see what it looks like on the inside of a tomb. This is the Karstendike tomb. It is the only cast iron tomb in the cemetery. It was also used to model a prop tomb in the movie Interview with the Vampire back in 94. The entire thing is made of cast iron. The Earhart tomb is where Judge John Howard Ferguson rests. Judge Ferguson was a judge that ruled that the Louisiana Railway Car Act of 1890 declared that rail companies had to provide separate but equal accommodations for black and white passengers traveling within state lines was constitutional. The No Cross, No Crown image references the Christian belief that if one does not accept the burdens of life, the cross, one will not be able to accept the rewards of heaven, the crown. In this empty space, the production crew for the film Double Jeopardy, starring Ashley Judd, built a fake tomb to use in the movie. And you can see the side of the other tomb there that's missing half the bricks in that picture. This raised graveyard has a broken column in the center of it. This is to represent life being cut short. The tomb is a memorial for the 22-year-old son of the McClellan family, who was killed in action in the American Civil War. He was a Confederate soldier who died at the Battle of Richmond in 1862. There are other family members that are buried at the site as well. These four tombs belonged to four childhood friends. They had formed a secret club called Corto, and as adults, they would continue to have secret meetings, and they would perform anonymous acts of generosity for people. They wanted to remain together for eternity, so they built their tombs together.
The New Orleans Home for Incurables was a place of refuge for people with severe mental or physical deformities or diseases that were considered beyond help. These people uh, were basically forgotten by their families because of their conditions. A rare instance where somebody is buried in the ground as opposed to in a tomb. In 1990, these were struck by lightning, blowing the, the fronts off and exposing the contents of 56 of these graves. Crazy. This particular tomb is listed as having the most names in this cemetery. There are currently 37 names on it, and 10 more are waiting to be put in there. They're on a list. Weird. <laughs> 